As the sun began to set on October 27, a group of hikers in Canada's highlands heard screams and howls that sent shivers down their spines. They immediately called the police and set out to investigate. A trail of blood, torn clothing, and a discarded penknife led them to a horrifying scene of utter chaos. Lying on the ground was a young woman who had been savaged by a pack of wild coyotes. She was bleeding profusely from several wounds, and a bloody coyote stood over her. The poor victim was Taylor Mitchell, a 19-year-old singer and songwriter from Toronto, Canada. Taylor was a nature lover and avid hiker, so when she found herself with some extra time before her performance in the fall of 2009, she decided to take a solo trip to Cape Breton to explore its stunning trails. She embarked on the Skyline Trail, a well-known route that winds through the National Park, on October 27. At just 19 years old, Taylor was already a talented musician with a successful album under her belt and a tour across Canada underway. But on this particular day, she traded in her guitar for hiking boots and set out to take in the breathtaking beauty of Cape Breton. As Taylor embarked on her hike through the park, she never could have predicted the terrible turn of events that awaited her. As she strolled through the peaceful wilderness, enjoying the serene surroundings, everything suddenly changed. The tranquil atmosphere was shattered as she was confronted by a group of coyotes. The pack of wild animals stood before her, snarling and baring their teeth. Coyotes are a common sight in the park, and while they are generally timid and avoid humans, they can sometimes become aggressive if they are very hungry or feel threatened. Also later evidence suggests they do sometimes go after bigger prey like moose and deer. As witnesses, later reported the animals pack were acting aggressively that day and seemed to be standing their ground. The aggressive coyotes attack took Taylor for prey and attacked her. Despite her efforts to fight them off, the coyotes were too strong and overpowered her. As the hikers following her screams entered the clearing at the trail, they were met with a disturbing scene. They saw personal items belonging to Mitchell, including keys and a small knife, followed by torn pieces of bloody clothing and a large amount of blood on the ground. Even the door to the washroom in the clearing was covered in blood. Next they saw Mitchell lying among the trees with a coyote standing over her. Despite the coyote's aggressive behavior, the hikers charged at it until it retreated from Mitchell. She was still conscious and able to speak. Meanwhile, the coyote stayed close by, growling menacingly and showing no fear until a Royal Canadian Mounted Police officer fired a shotgun at him. Taylor sustained serious injury and was airlifted to the hospital, but unfortunately, due to blood loss, she did not survive the attack. The news of Taylor's death shocked the community and sent shockwaves throughout the country. People were shocked and saddened by the tragedy, and many were left wondering how something like this could happen. In the aftermath of the attack, park officials launched an investigation to determine what had caused the coyotes to become aggressive. They found that the coyotes had been living in the park for some time, and they had become accustomed to being fed by humans. This had caused them to become less afraid of humans, which in turn made them more likely to attack. They also found that the coyotes had been feeding on a dead deer in the area, which may have contributed to their aggressive behavior. Investigations at the time concluded that the combination of these factors had led to the tragic attack on Taylor. Sometime during the investigation's authorities suggested killing of coyotes. In response Mitchell's mother issued a statement of her own. She said, We take a calculated risk when spending time in nature's fold. It's the wildlife's terrain, she wrote. When the decision had been made to kill the pack of coyotes, I clearly heard Taylor's voice say, Please don't, this is their space. She wouldn't have wanted their demise, especially as a result of her own. Taylor's death serves as a reminder of the importance of respecting wildlife and following safety guidelines when spending time in nature. It's also a reminder of the fragile balance that exists between humans and the natural world and the need to protect and preserve it for future generations. In honor of Taylor's memory, her family and friends established the Taylor Mitchell Fund, a non-profit organization dedicated to promoting wildlife conservation and education. Through the fund, they have been able to raise awareness about the importance of coexisting with wildlife and protecting the natural world. Today, Taylor's memory lives on through her music and through the work of the Taylor Mitchell Fund. 
She will always be remembered as a talented musician and a kind-hearted nature lover. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to stay tuned for more true stories.